Welcome to today's video where we're looking at two very special watches in my collection. The original Rado Diastar from the... This was a watch that came out in 1962. And the Diastar 14, which this watch came out in 1971 or maybe 1972. I think 1971. And of course, the one thing that always is the most important part about the Rado is naturally the case. It's made of tungsten carbide as many of you know. Some of you th who don't know tungsten carbide is a very scratch resistant uh, metal. So it has these very sharp finishes and it will have absolutely no scratches over the years that these watches have been worn. All Rados came with sapphire crystals. So again, the crystal won't have a, a scratch. The case won't have a scratch. They really look new after uh, 50 years for these watches. When the Diastar was introduced, it was the shield case that was the iconic Diastar case design. This is one of the very first watches in 1962 to have a sapphire crystal. Obviously the the tungsten carbide case is truly breathtaking because it just would not scratch. And remember in these days we have a lot of watches but in 1962 when this watch first comes out you really had two types of watches. You could either get a gold or gold filled watch or you could get a stainless steel watch. And beyond those, you didn't really have a choice. So in other words, when the Diastar comes out, the Diastar Shield in 1962, you could get a stainless steel watch like this Omega Seamaster that I have here or you could get a gold plated watch like this even though this is a much later uh, Omega Quartz watch. The Diastar does change everything. Its design was extremely innovative. This was a futuristic space age design for its time. It was really a watch like no other. And I think that was one of the problems of the Diastar is that because it was so different it was a very polarizing watch. Now, Rado is a small, small company, so every movement they're using is just an ETA movement. And this watch, I think, is actually not from the 1960s. This may be a much later model. It does have the faceted crystal, that faceted uh, sapphire crystal. And by, they just aren't able to sell as many watches as say Omega or the other larger companies. And of course, at this time, the Swiss watch companies are getting, uh, are having to basically deal with Seiko. Seiko is selling more watches as the 60s is uh, rolling by. So in 1970s, early 70s, Rado tries to shake up the shield design. You remember, this looks like a shield with the Diastar 14. The Diastar 14 was a more premium watch this one has the tiger stone dial. It's essentially a very thin piece of stone. You know it's a tiger stone dial because the Rado and the Diastar would be printed on this. It would not be uh, applied like on this one. And the simple reason is the tiger stone is very hard to work on. Similarly, the anchor at the 12 o'clock that actually pivots is just printed on the tiger stone dial because again you can't really drill holes in this very thin stone veneer. The movement in both these watches is exactly the same. It's a, a let me clean up my watches a bit. It's an ETA movement. There's nothing exceptional about the movement. The width of the cases is about 36, 37 millimeter and the lug to lug in case of the shield is 42 millimeters. In case of the Diastar 14, this is about 39 or 40 millimeters. Nothing significant. 
uh, 12 millimeter case uh, thickness. The case back is actually just simple stainless steel in this case. And sure enough, they will say scratch proof water sealed. And in case of the Diastar 14, they have the seahorse and again water sealed because they are no longer saying waterproof. These are 17 jewel movements. The movement is really nothing uh, much to write home about. But it's really the design that makes these watches so very significant. And with these two watches, the shield and the square facetted crystal design of this, I have the really the two major Diastar designs that came out in the 1960s and 1970s. If you look at the back of the watch, you'd realize it's just a simple stainless steel case that is actually set within this tungsten car carbide uh, bezel. I can't really call it a bezel, it's essentially a bimetal case. But you can clearly see the edge out there, how the tungsten car carbide becomes a crown guard here. The crown is signed on both of these watches. There is the Rado Ang Anchor. And on this one you can also see there is the Rado, Rado Anchor. Rado watches were extremely popular in South Asia and you know and in parts of Southeast Asia. And the unfortunate thing about that is most Rado watches that you get on eBay these days will be fake. In fact, that's why I had to wait for such a long time to get my Rado watches because I needed to get them from a verified source where I knew I was sure about the authenticity. I don't think they make very good investments because first of all, the design is polarizing and there's just so many fakes that it's hard to uh, sell these. But you really shouldn't get a Rado watch if you want to uh, sell it. You should just get a Seiko or a... Omega or a Rolex or something. What makes these watches significant is they had a design that was like no other watch. And because they had the tungsten carbide and they had that sapphire crystal, they are completely scratch proof after 50 years. I wish I had the original uh, bracelet for this, but I don't. There's a replacement spiral bracelet, but it actually works pretty well with the gold dial and the gold plating and the polished stainless steel which just goes with the tungsten it's a it's a reasonably whoever substituted the dial in the 1980s maybe or maybe the 1970s did a good choice of course my dial star comes with its original uh, bracelet including a signed clasp and this you know it's not that fancy because you realize it's actually it's not a solid end link but at Again, in the 1960s and the 1970s, Swiss watch manufacturers didn't really make fancy watches. It's only in the 1990s that they really went premium. So, you know, it's pretty good for what it's worth. Anyway, I wanted to thank you for watching the video. This was just a, a long-winded uh, talk about two of my favorite watches. And thank you for all my subscribers. If you haven't subscribed, please be sure to subscribe to my channel. And I will see you on another video.